Hello reformers and welcome back to A Clash of Kings. Now when we left off we were defending Storm's End against the likes of some guy from the Reach or somewhere, I don't know, Westerlands maybe. Anyway, as you can see here, we have a ransom to sell and I thought I'd start the recording here because it's important for me to show you that I'm actually gaining money from these places because if it just comes out of nowhere then you're just like, oh, that, the genie appeared and just gave me some. But no, it's actually ransoms. I actually have like, I think, what is it now? I think I have, ooh, this is nice. Yeah, so otherwise, I do have about... I think it's five or maybe even six lords in the garrison, in the prison tower of Acorn Hall. And speaking of prison towers, I don't even have one built, which is kind of sad. But anyway, the gentleness, the, the generousness, the kindness of King Stannis Baratheon is upon us. And we will be accepting the honor of Storm's End. And just so you know, I've also gained a little bit of cash from the loot that I've been gaining here. While I've been waiting here, there was a fellow, I think his name was Brian Foss, Fossaway or Fossway, I, I don't know, I can't remember his name now, but he was from the Reach and he was attempting to besiege Storm's End. I don't know whether it's, no, it still doesn't have the tag. He unfortunately managed to escape, so obviously that is a bit, of, mm, that's a bit annoying. And uh, yeah, and then, w uh, well, obviously I had a bunch of space in my inventory. This is the food that I literally just bought a couple of moments ago at Hull. And I just thought, wow, we're gaining a huge amount of money from this, this loot. I mean, we might want to do a little bit more, you know, vassal fighting. So we're going to spend a little bit of money here to recruit about five times. That should be okay. I'd actually like to get a training yard. We're going to use the ransom money from, what was his name? So one of the Freys, Stevron or Stavron or whatever his name was. And we're going to pay from the treasury. That's going to take 31 days. It's going to be pretty harsh for those, for that month, I guess. It's not going to be giving us too many good units. But let's just see if anyone decides to turn up now that we have ownership of Storm's End. It's been such a long time since we've actually taken it that by the time we have now taken claim of it you know, and so on and so forth, it's just been uh, a hard slog, basically, because any time someone decides to do a siege against this particular fief, I'm always just like, please no. <laughs> Please no, because it takes so long for anyone to get to the walls, and it basically just means that it takes even longer for them to lose, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, that's obviously a bit of a problem. It depends on the size of the force, of course. I mean, look at this. My Acorn Hall garrison is literally so small right now that it's only 800, and my wages for... Our own party are very, very small now as well because obviously I've lost so many expensive units. I mean, I don't think I have the Hedge Knights anymore. No, I don't have the Hedge Knights anymore. I barely have any Knights to speak of at all. And that is obviously making a huge difference in terms of our wages. I mean, these guys, for goodness sake, they're, they're literally 40 Dinars, which is fantastic. I mean, I'm not going to say anything about that. That's really, really cool. Anyway, let's see... Uh, some agility for him, I suppose. And not power throw, please. I'd like to get some power strike. That would be good. And let's get him a little bit more in one-handed. Thank you very much. Okay, there we go. Nice. All right. So we already have 33 in Storm's End here. It's about time that we look around and see what's going on with the surrounding territories. Dawn has been untouched, as you can see. So they're, they're probably going to be quite the handful, I guess, once the Targaryens invade. As far as I'm aware, that is around day 300, because I think it's now timed in terms of the amount of days that you've currently been playing. So otherwise, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go and scout out Evenfall Hall, see if there are any vassals there. If there are some vassals, then it is probably going to be in my best interest probably not to attack it, because we've already suffered massive losses throughout the besieging of Storm's End and that endeavor that we undertook. And, oh, no, no, it seems like they have some pretty... Oh, okay. Oh. Eh. Okay, well, their infantry force is not very spectacular, but their longbowmen, I mean, they, they have 123. That's 
That's pretty harsh. That's literally more than half of the people in the garrison. Why do they have a siege tower? Why do they have a siege tower? I'm asking everyone. Why? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know why they have a siege tower. Let, let's let's try it, shall we? I mean, Storm's End, if it becomes under siege, I'm going to have to head back there and defend it. Ooh, I thought that oh, I thought that message about the besieging of Ixacaria was actually something to do with Storm's End, but no, thankfully not. Thankfully, we can just stay here, relax a little bit, because I, I don't know, I'm sick, really, of the Storm's End siege layout. Even though it may be really cool to see for the first couple of times off screen, I've seen it another twice, another two times, so it is kind of grinding on me a little bit because it takes just so long for anyone to get anywhere in it. And then as soon as they do get somewhere, they get stuck and I'm going to have to unstick them, you know what I mean. So, yeah, by killing them, obviously. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that it hasn't really been the best time, suffice it to say, because literally most of it is just waiting around for anything to happen. So that's kind of annoying. But otherwise, let's hope that this is not the same. And I'm going to tell everyone to follow me with the exception of the archers that I'm going to place over there on that small little hill. And hopefully that's going to make a good difference to the effectiveness of our archers. But do bear in mind that most of our forces do not have shields. And that's going to be very, uh, very painful for us. As you can plainly see. I mean, really... I, uh, uh, yeah, having all of these really kind of high level units be killed for free by these longbowmen is really quite painful to me because I've been running around with some of these guys for the entirety of the time that we've been a member of the Dragonstone faction all the way back when we first started doing that task for Stannis himself and, you know, some of these guys were actually in the battle with... King Renly himself. So it's really sad to actually see some of these guys perish in this. So I'm not really happy about that, to be honest. But again, it's it's necessary, you know? It's one of those things that is just completely necessary for the siege. So there's not much more I can do. I mean, yeah, I can do 36 damage with my crossbow, which is apparently one of the most powerful crossbows, if not the most powerful crossbow in the mod. And I don't even know why I'm hitting, really, with such a small amount of damage. I mean, it shouldn't make any difference, right? I mean, power draw does not affect crossbows. That is what I've been led to believe throughout the years that I've been playing the game. And... As far as I'm aware, that is the case here. I mean, if it's not, then me wearing this armor is obviously reducing a huge amount of our damage. But from my experience, crossbows are just, in general, much more powerful because of that reason. Because they don't have power draw to rely on for damage. So instead, they just have a huge amount of base damage. And we have just lost... I, I, don't, I don't think we can do this, actually. I I don't I, I mean I really I don't know I don't think we can do this there are I mean how many how many infantry do we have we have 35 and we've literally lost 28 I I don't know whether I want to do this I mean none of our crossbowmen none of our longbowmen have actually been doing anything up until now so this is very painful I don't know I don't know whether it's worth it I mean I'd love to be able to take this but Maybe I need to do some schmoozing and, and so on and so forth of, of Stannis himself and maybe try and gain the marshalship so that I can order around a couple of vassals because this is... It, I don't... I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, we finally arrived, but is it worth it? We've lost 42 now. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, I'm going to have to get out my sword and everything. I mean, we have... There's 221 guys in here. I don't think it's going to work. And even a thrust... Even a thrust from our wonderful arming sword is not enough to save us, really. Is it? I don't think so. I mean, I'm going to die. I am going to die from one of these archers. Which is going to be pretty frustrating to begin with anyway, because... Well... 
I don't think I should die from an archer, to be honest, but oh well. Not much I can do about that. I just have to sustain myself and try to eliminate as many as possible so that we can actually get inside on the battlements. Oh, and I walked into that longbowman. I should have just stayed still, to be honest, but mm, that was really, really heavy loss battle, isn't it? I'm going to have to retreat because without me, there's no way they're going to penetrate that. We lost 40... Actually, no, 34 killed. Wow, and 46 wounded. Oh, well, the wounds obviously don't make any difference. It seems like even Fall Hall will have to be left for another time. And it seems like one of our... <laughs> one of our house members, one of the House Mormont members, has besieged the crossing. Well, that's pretty interesting. It's been a while since I've seen any of them, actually. I, I don't think I've ever seen any of them before anyway. I think they may have been added in a recent... Well, in, in the most recent version, I suppose, in, in 4.0, I guess. Anyway, there's 71 now in Storm's End, which is fantastic. That's really, really good. That will enable me to quite easily restore my army. And I'm hopeful that I'll be able to make this my sort of launching pad for the, you know, foreseeable future. And that's hopefully going to make a good difference. But these Dragonstone units are not very good, shall we say. They are not very good for this kind of, you know, this kind of besieging. It's just really not very good. Anyway, what are we going to do now? Well, I need to rest, obviously. That is that is basically priority number one. I don't have much money. Mm. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to wait here for some time. We're going to take some units out of the garrison, and then I'm going to try and scout out the other fiefs in question. I'm probably not going to be doing the Weeping Town or Mistwood, because the Weeping Town is, in my opinion, one of the more difficult ones, and Mistwood is just, in my opinion, suicidal right now, because it is one of those that favors archers so heavily, and I'm not even talking about even for Hall here, but yes, favors archers so heavily that I don't think we're going to be able to do anything. Ooh, lovely. Thank you very much for the 5,300. That is crazy good. Very, very nice. And that's going to make a huge difference about our wages. That's going to pay for our wages for at least two weeks, I suppose. So that's kind of nice. And otherwise, I think we're I think we're pretty good. So I can start to take out a couple of things here now. I'm going to probably take some man-at-arms. Because they have shields. Yes. <laughs> they have shields. That's probably going to help us out a little bit more than the halberdiers. But... I mean, that's not to say that halberdiers are bad, because they're actually pretty cool, but the AI just doesn't know how to use them very well, which is obviously a big, big issue. So, all right. I think we are ready to go. Everyone seems to be in pretty high spirits. So it's now time to... Oh, well, yeah, we have actually quite a few vassals in the area, which is quite nice. I'm going to go and scout out... Oh, God. Oh, what's happening here? One of... Oh, no. This is awful. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Ignore the situation. Okay, let's let's geld him. Okay, oh, that's fine. We gain some honor. Gain some renown. That's pretty decent. We do lose morale, but that is easy enough to regain. A group of knights wishes to join you. Kill them. <laughs> no, let's let's probably not do that. Hedge knights. Oh, hello, an extra 1000 to my weekly wage. Ah, yes, great. Okay, I'm going to take a look at Mistwood, just to take a look and make sure that we're not missing out on a really easy siege. Let's take uh, check out the Weeping Town. Oh, 289. Really, that's not very, that's not very good. Okay, let's go to Harvest Hall. Uh, st are you serious? Are you serious? Come on now. I mean, yeah, I know that there's not many people. Oh, uh, wow, he's gonna. Whoa, he got massacred. He got massacred. Thank you very much, fellows. You're actually helping me. I'm actually kind of surprised by that, but that's nice. Okay, so let's go to Harvest Hall. Maybe we can try and just expand our territory out to the west there. Ooh, huge amounts of Dragonstone vassals. I've actually just been called by Hugh Granderson, so maybe we should go and help him. He was attempting to take Tumbleton from the Reach. Maybe we should go and help him. Mm, I'm not entirely sure about that because I would like to eliminate the Stormlands as quickly as possible or at least to expand our territory so much that they really don't have anything 
else to do but stay in one of their fiefs. Harvest Hall is not looking very good either. Oh, tell me more. Vulture's Roost was the seat of the Vulture King. He rose up in rebellion during the reign of Daron II, proclaiming himself king. Supposedly, he was quite mad, often pretending to be a vulture himself, going around the castle with feathers stuck to his head and eating rotten meat. And uh, do I need to guess what his cause of death was? <laughs> uh, yes, I think we can kind of tell, can't we? Anyway, Blackhaven actually does seem to be the easiest one to take, but there is a vassal in there. So I guess Harvest Hall is going to be the one we'll try. And, the, well, we have the most units that we've ever had, with the exception of, obviously, me becoming the liege of our own faction. Okay, so I'm... Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. I'm really bad at this particular event, so I'm just going to jump in the water. You're soaked and shivering. All you managed to do was scrape your knuckles on a rock. <laughs> It'll be a long while before you're dry again. Okay. Mm, thank you very much. Great. Okay, so at least we don't... Oh, no. Oh, I don't know why, but every single Stormlands Fief that is remaining is an absolute slaughter fest for the offensive team, which is, in this case, us. So, I am not happy about this at all. Because if you know this, if you know this particular castle, this is one of the, as far as I'm aware, this is one of the Saranid castles? Or one of the Kurgit castles from Native? And I gotta say that it is, in my opinion, one of the more difficult sieges for a very good reason, which you're seeing now. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. We're, we're, we're not going to be doing this one either. This is... It, no, I'm, I'm sorry. It's just not going to work with our current unit composition. I'm going to need to do something different because having a huge amount of halberdiers is just running them into their deaths. And that is not something that I want to do because we're just wasting resources like that. And that is just awful. Absolutely awful. So I don't know where we're going to go next. I don't know. I mean, we have defended Storm's End, which is good, and I'm, I guess I'm just going to wait there for a little bit, see what happens. Maybe Dragonstone is going to launch some sort of attack on one of the Stormlands thieves. It's highly unlikely. Let's actually go and check out Tumbleton and see if they are still laying siege to it, because maybe we could lend a bit of a hand there. I mean, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind taking a look and seeing if we could you know, capitalize on this a little bit. Aha, hello there. It seems like they are indeed trying it. So, oh, hello, Sir Titus. That's Tumbleton over there, dreadful place. The whores are old, the wine older, and the dice filled with lead. But that's to be expected. The people still wail over the sack. Oh, the sack, and it's been almost 200 years to hear the locals tell it. Twas only a fortnight ago that the betrayers descended on the town with their dragons. Sure, the sack was horrible, but the bag was even worse. Ah, oh, no. I'm just making a joke, yes. Of course. So, so let's, uh, let's wait here for a little bit and see what's going on. Alright, so, yeah, you see me gaining seven renown there in the text log because there was a a bard or something that wrote a poem about us or something along those lines and I paid him an additional 500 coins to you know spread the word and so on and so forth and that gained us seven renown which is pretty good otherwise I cut back here for a very good reason because the Westerlands is offering me 4,100 coins once again so we're getting even more money and as you can see the Dragonstone faction has finally launched their assault so I'm going to be waiting here for a little bit of time, just until they've eliminated, yeah, shall we say another, another 30. There we go. That's nice. Okay, so we're going to go in with 150 enemies still remaining, because I'd actually like to participate a little bit in the siege, and we're going to see what it entails, because I think we've taken Tumbleton once before, in one of my series of A Clash of Kings, and... Hmm, I'm trying to think now. Oh yes, that's when it was called Stumbleton, wasn't it? Yes, it was called Stumbleton because I actually renamed it for a very specific reason, because Elias, way back in the day, was known as Lord Stumble. So, yeah, it's because he would continually stumble in the worst possible posi you know, positions and situations and all that, all that sort of thing. So, yes, that's pretty amusing, but otherwise... 
Yeah. We are hopefully not going to get absolutely pin cushioned from the huge amounts of enemies that are ahead of us here. Now, of course, if they've eliminated most of the... Whoa, we have a really massive battle advantage. Well, I suppose that is to be expected considering. But, yeah, there's only 63 of the enemy and we have, well... We have more than double that, actually, than uh, they actually have here. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, do they have two ladders? No, they do not. Well, okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to follow Gurnir, okay? We're going to follow Gurnir and this one-armed villager. <laughs> yes, there's one-armed villager. We're going to follow these two and see... Okay, take your bets. Who's going to die first? Do you think Gurnir is going to die first, or do you think armed villager is going to die first? Well, that's the thing. This villager... Oh, he just got shot in the head. He's still alive, though. Yeah, still alive. Really. He's, weather, he's wearing a leather cap, for goodness sake. He's wearing a leather cap, and he just got shot in the head. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to protect him. Anyway, Gurnia is still untouched, amusingly enough. I'm actually kind of hoping that Gurnia gets eliminated first, because I think the armed villager is rather amusing to see that survive. Oh, no, no, never mind. He's, he's down. He got killed by one of the crossbowmen. That, but that, that is to be expected. Gurney is now being targeted, but that really shouldn't deter him too much because he is just an absolute beast. Anyway, let's get up here, see what we can do. And, uh, yeah, okay. So apparently I'm going to have to do some damage. I was hopeful that I could just kind of sneak in there a little bit, but it seems like that is not to be, and I am just going to take a huge amount of damage for nothing. Really? Really? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me deal some damage here a little bit. Or not. Really? Am I really going to die from... Ah. <sighs> yeah. I thought to myself, oh, that, that looks like a really easy way to get in on the side. Do you see? Do you see this, this small area there? I thought to myself, that looks easy. Actually not. Actually not. You, you probably can't go that way, so... That is unfortunate. I'm going to have to retreat because you don't really want to watch the AI fight, do you? No, you don't really want to watch that. So I'm just going to wait and see whether we actually take this. I would have loved to have participated in this siege, but... I mean, you saw it, right? Yeah. Today's episode... Not very lucky, I gotta say. Not very lucky at all. But, as you can see, Dragonstone has taken Tumbleton from the Reach. And we are encroaching upon them quite nicely now, even though the Reach has an absolutely huge territory. I think we're, we're, we're going to be eating away at them a little bit. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.